In this video, I'll be reviewing Decal Master, a really great Blender add-on for quickly adding decals to your model. So using the add-on is way faster than manually setting up decals, it's super easy to use and it'll really speed up your workflow, and there's no need to edit the UVs or fiddle around with the shader nodes. The add-on gives you a really nice interface to quickly add decals to your model. So the add-on creator contacted me and asked me if I'd like to check out this add-on, so thank you so much for letting me try this out. And I do have an affiliate link to the add-on in the description, so if you purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission, but I only recommend content to my audience which I really stand behind. So if you've purchased the add-on, then you'll just need to download the add-on files, so you'll need to download the add-on and then also the decals folder. So here's the two zip files of the product files. So here is the decal master blender file and then here's the decals pack. So you can just right click on the decals pack and then you can click on extract here and it's going to extract this folder. So in this folder, there's gonna be a bunch of different decals that you can use to add to your models, or of course you can add any image texture that you have. So here are all the decals that the product comes with. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different decals which you can use for many things. So here I am in Blender, and I thought it would be cool to add some decals to a cardboard box. So I've just added in my cardboard box. This is from my procedural cardboard material. If you wanna check out that tutorial, link is in the description. So I now need to install the add-on, so I'll click on edit and I'll go to the preferences. Then I'm going to click on this drop down arrow right here on the add-ons tab and I'm going to click on install from disk. Then you just need to locate to the folder where you've downloaded the add-on so I'll click on the add-on file here and then I'll click on install from disk and then if you don't see it here you can search for it and you can check mark the add-on and then make sure to click on the save preferences button so Blender saves the preferences so it's already enabled. Now what you can also do is you can choose a directory and you can choose a folder on your computer where you have a bunch of decals or you can also add your texture folder. So I'm going to click on this button. Button. Then I'll go to the same folder. I'm going to go here into the decals pack folder and click on accept. So now it's automatically going to open up the file with my decals when I'm adding in decals. So I'll click on save preferences again and then I can close the user preferences. So I'm now going to press the N key to open up the side panel and here is the DCL master, so decal master. So make sure you select an object and then you can click on add DCL setup. So we can now just click on the start projecting button. So we'll just click on this and it's going to open up Blender in full screen and it's going to go into the rendered viewport mode. So I can now just move around here and you can see there's this placeholder and this is just going to show us where the decal is. Now we need to add a decal and you can see right here it says press F to import a decal and also there's some really helpful shortcut keys behind me so I'm going to just move myself over here and you can see there's all these different buttons here so F is to import a decal and there's some other ones here which we'll be going over and then there's also some more settings up here like to show if I'm in perspective or orthographic and also how many decals I've projected. So I'm going to hit the F key to import a decal. So this will bring up Blender's file browser and you can see it's automatically opened up this decals folder because I set this up in the add-on settings. So I'm going to go into the decals folder and I'm going to go to the signs folder. And I'm just going to start by adding this box up. I'm going to be adding a few different decals that make sense to add on a box. So I'll just click on box up and import decal. And you can see there's the decal. So I can just move it around. And it's really cool that I can see this in the real time and just add it wherever I want. And then I can also press R to rotate and S to scale. And then I can also press 1, 3, and 7 on the numpad to go to front view, side view, and top view. I can also hit the 5 on the numpad to go to perspective and orthographic. So I'll just go to front view and I can just zoom over here. And then if I want to place the decal, I'll hit the space bar. That's going to place it. And now if I move over here, you can see it kind of worked like a stamp. So it's stamped on the decal. And now I can just move it over to another area and I could add another decal if I wanted. So already this is way easier than doing it manually in Blender. Because if you do it manually in Blender, you have to go to the materials. You have to add in the image texture. You have to UV unwrap it. And you might need to create a separate UV map for the decal. And then you have to mix it into the base color using a mix color. So it's quite a big process. So this add-on really speeds up the process and really you can just focus on the creative side of making your textures. So let's press the F key again. And for a cardboard box, I like the signs. So I'll go here into signs. I'll do the flammable one. So I'll open this one up, zoom in here, maybe scale it down a little bit, hit the space bar just to add that there. And I'll add another decal by hitting F. And maybe there's something fragile in the box, so I'll choose the fragile one and import decal. And then I can just move this one over here, 
Let's maybe scale it up a bit. I'll put it here on the front of the box and just place that there. Now, another cool thing I can do is add tape to the box. So I'll press F to add more decals. I'll go into the decals folder and then I'll go into the tape folder and you can see there are some little bits of tape here. So this is super useful for adding to a cardboard box. So I'll just add like this piece of duct tape here. Maybe I'll scale the piece of duct tape up and place it there. So that's really cool. Let's choose another one. So I'll choose this tape here. Let's go to another view, maybe add another piece piece of tape there. Now you can see right down here on the bottom of the box it's a little bit dark and I can't see the decal that well. So if you hold down the tab key, you can move your mouse back and forth and you can see that's gonna change the HDRI rotation. So I can just hold down the tab key, move my mouse around and I can just move the HDRI until I can just see the lighting better on this side. And then if I wanna make it stronger, I can hold down the Q button and I can move my mouse back and forth and you can see I can make the HDRI a lot, a lot stronger. So now I can see the decals a bit better because they're Writer. Now, of course, you don't just have to add the decals which are included in the add-on in the product files. So this one here, this image I've downloaded from pixabay.com. So I will just add this one in here from my Pixabay downloads. I'll click on import decal. I can move this over here, maybe go to the side and just place that right there. Now, when you're done importing the decals, you can just hit the escape key and that'll go back to your default view. And I'll hold down the Z button, go into the render viewport mode so we can check out our decals. Now, there's a lot more settings that you can play around with. This is just the very beginning. There's a bunch of settings here in the add-on where you can edit each one of the decals. Firstly, let's go over the layers here. So there's all these different layers. So you can see if I click on each one of them, it's gonna show me the different decals that I've added. And if I click on this arrow here, that is gonna jump to the decal. So I can quickly see all the decals that I've added and jump to them. Then there's the eye button, which is gonna hide it from the view. So if I just wanna hide it from view, I can do that. And I can also click on the trash icon if I just wanna get rid of it. And then these are also layered. So for example, if I have two decals over each other, I can click on it and then click on the up arrow to move it up so it's above another decal. So I don't have any overlapping decals right now, but that's super useful if you have overlapping decals. You can click on a decal and click on the arrow to bring it up to the top of the stack. Now let's say this flammable one, let's say I wanna make this darker so I can see it a bit better. So if I just click on the flammable two, you can see I can zoom into it so I know that it's there. And I can now go down here to shading and there's a bunch of different settings. So for example, I could add RGB curves and I could just drag this down and I can make that more of like a red color, that's pretty cool. I could also add the hue saturation value. I could change the hue, also the saturation and the value. So maybe I'll turn the value down and I can see it is a nice dark color. So let's go to a different one here. So let's go over to this one here. So let's say I wanted this to look more faded. So what I'm gonna do is go up here and I will just find this one by clicking here. So here's the fragile one. And I'm gonna open up the damage here. So now you can see there's tear and scratches. So I'm gonna add a tear. And then I can just play around with these settings so I can add the tear amount. So that's really cool. Now it looks like it's been worn away. There's also a feather so I can make it like a bit more subtle on the edges. Tear detail so maybe I can have it more detailed. And then I can also scale that. So you can see really quickly I can make the decal look more worn so the box looks a bit old. Let's also see what the scratches look like so if I add scratches we'll click on add scratches and you can see I can turn up the scratches and then turn up the scratches scale and if I zoom way in they're pretty subtle you can see there are some really small scratches. I might want to turn the scale down so maybe I'll just drag this down just to make the scratches a little bit bigger but you can see there's some really nice scratches there which I can add on that decal. Now maybe I want the whole thing to look like it's more faded so if I open up the blending I can just turn this decal opacity down and now it looks like it's a bit faded away and then there's also these blending modes so if I hold down the control key and scroll my mouse wheel on the blending modes you can see I can change it to lighten or screen or color dodge so these are all the settings that would come in like a mixed color node so for example maybe a really good one would be this saturation one that one looks kind of cool I could also use the value one and the value one has much more of cardboard box colors so instead of it being colored with like a color printer maybe this was more of a stamp which is a black and white stamp so that looks a bit better on the cardboard box so I'll just leave that at value. So maybe I'll go to this box up here and we can add some settings to this. So let's go down here to effects and we can add effects nodes. So now there is this shrink here. There's also this edge blur so I can make it look like it's been kind of faded and kind of worn and then there's also just this overall blur. Let's also add the edge noid. This is pretty cool as well so I can kind of make it look more distorted. That's pretty cool. Maybe just turn it to a very subtle value and then also change the amount of noise. So as you can see, this add-on is super customizable. There's so many settings and it's really easy to quickly customize the decals. Now there's also transform settings. So if I open up the transform here, let's say I place the decal, but then I just wanna move it around just a little bit because maybe I realized it was just 
not at quite the right location. I can open up the, the transform settings and I can change the location. So maybe I'll drag it more down here into the corner of the box and I can also scale it if I want to and also rotate it. Now, another thing I can do is I can add normal decals. So they're actually decals which are gonna have some bump to them. So if I scroll up here to add any of the decals with a normal, you wanna first make sure you click on this button to toggle on the normal mode. Then I'll click on start projection and it's gonna tell us here that it's normal map mode. So that that's very useful as well. So you can see on default, there's this plus here. So that's really cool. You can see instead of it being a color, it's actually a normal map but I'll press the F key to import a decal. So this time I'm gonna go to the normal stamps and you can see again, the add-on automatically comes with some different normal stamps. But those normal maps were more like metal or sci-fi. So I'm instead gonna go to the decals asphalt and I'm just gonna open up like this one here. Let's open this up and you can see now it looks like the box has been kind of ripped or cut and we can just kind of place it down here, hit the space bar to add that decal there. And now if I hit the escape key to go back here, let's go into that rendered viewport mode to see that. And you can see now it looks like there's just a little bit of damage on the cardboard. And maybe this normal strength here, I'll just turn this down so it's a bit more subtle. So now there's just a little bit of damage on the cardboard. Now, if you remember earlier, I was talking about the different blending modes. Well, while you are projecting decals, you can actually change the blending mode. So what I'm gonna do is just move these objects out of the way and I'm gonna add a new object. So for example, I'll just add a cube and I'm gonna add a bevel to this cube. Let's shade it smooth. I'm gonna go to the materials and just add a new material. And then I can just click on add DCL setup and let's click on start projecting. So in the add-on product files, I'm just gonna add this concrete texture. I'll import this decal and then I'll hit S to scale and I'll just make this pretty big. And I wanna have kind of this little dark area, kind of where there's a bit of rust kind of dribbling down here on this metal. I'm gonna have it right here on the very top and then just hit the space bar to place that right there. So now I'll hit the F key to import a new decal. This one, I'm gonna import the ball game sign. So I'll click on import decal and then I'll scale it down here. Let's also go to side view and I'm just gonna move it up here. So then before I hit the space bar to place this decal, you can see here the C button is gonna bring up the decal blending. So I'll hit the C button and now you can see there's the blending mode. So I can scroll my mouse wheel and I can change this to whatever I want. So I can just, change this to a different one if there's a better blending mode that I like. For now though, I'm gonna leave it set to mix. But then there's also two settings. There's the F key, which is the blending amount, and the G key, which is the blending contrast. So if I hit the F key and then drag my mouse over, you can see it's gonna blend the sign decal with the background decal. So I believe what this is doing is it's taking the darker values and it's placing it on top of this decal. So we're basically blending this through the other decal. So I can place that there, and then you can click, and then I'll go out of that decal blending mode. I'll hit the C key though to go back to it. And then this time I'll hit G. So you can see if I hold down G, that's gonna do the blending contrast. And then F, that is going to do the blending amount. And then again, just left click to place that. And then you can hit the space bar to place the decal. And then if you wanna change these settings, you can scroll right down here and on the blending, you can see there's these settings here. So there's the blending amount and the contrast, and then also this opacity if you wanna make it more faded. Let's also add some edge noise. So we'll go down here to the effects, we'll add effects. And then we can click on this plus here to add edge noise. So now let's add the noise amount. We'll add a bit of noise there to look like it's maybe been cracked or worn on the edges. We can also add the noise scale and then also this this noise detail here, maybe make it a little bit more detailed. And now you can see there's just some little chunks there on the edge of the decal. Now, another useful setting that I wanna show you is the masking. So I'm gonna to go to the add menu. I'm just gonna add a plane. We will add a new material. We'll add the DCL setup, and then I'll start projecting. I'll hit F to import a decal, and then I'll just open up this concrete here, and I'll just go to top view, scale this up, make it a bit bigger, and then just hit the space bar to place that. Now I'm gonna add another decal. So I'll go back to decals here, and I will go to signs, and let's just add on this one here. So this sign here, go to top view, hit the S key just to scale this down. Now before I place this, there's two different masking settings that I can play around with. So if I hit the V key, that's gonna go into the masking, and then again, you can use the F key and the G key. So the F key is gonna turn it into an alpha. So if I turn it into an alpha, it's basically like a transparent area. So maybe this would be useful if you're trying to like make a window or just add some transparent hole. I'll hit the F key though to bring that back. 
Now the second one is the back face masking. So let's say I don't want this decal to be on the other side. So normally if I hit the space bar to place the decal, now if I go here to the back, you can see it's right there on the back side. Well, let's say that I don't want it to be there on the back side. So this time I'll hit V again to go to the setting. Then I'll hit G to turn on the back face masking. Then I'll just left click to confirm that and then hit the space bar to place this. So now if I go here to the bottom side, you can see it's not there on the back face. So that is really useful as well. Now we haven't really done much with the normal decals and the normal decals are really cool. So I just added a new cube with a bevel and I'm gonna add a new material to it. And I'll just make it like a gray color and let's make it metallic and maybe just turn the roughness down so we have a metal cube. So now we'll click on add DCL setup. And then again, if you wanna add a normal, you wanna click on the normal mode and then click on start projecting. So now you can see it's gonna add this plus here, hit the space bar to add that decal. And now we have that plus there. Let's hit the F key to import a decal. So this time I'll go into the normal stamps and let's add some cool decals. So maybe I'll add this one here and then maybe scale this way down. So this one kind of looks like a screw or a bolt. So maybe I'll put this here, hit the space bar just to place that. And I can just quickly place those decals around. Let's choose another decal so maybe I'll add this one here maybe scale this one up a bit scale it up here and then place it right there and then let's maybe choose this circular one maybe I'll scale this down and put it there inside that one so you can see this is really cool and quickly you can get some cool sci-fi details on a metallic object now if I hit the escape key to go out of the decal projecting mode, I can also change some of the settings. So if I go into the rendered viewport mode, I can change the strength here. So you can again, click on whatever decal and click here to select it. So let's maybe select this one here and I can change the normal strength. And then there's also a custom roughness. So I, if I choose this, I can make a custom roughness. So maybe I could have this one more rough. There's also a metallic value. So if I click on this, I can make it more metallic or less metallic. And then there's also a base color. So if I wanted to, I could make this maybe like a, a dark blue or maybe a light blue and then maybe also turn the roughness down so it's a bit more shiny so now you can see right here we have this blue shiny metallic decal now the other really cool thing about this add-on is you can actually create your own custom decals so I'm in a new blender file and I'm just gonna go to the add menu and I'm just gonna add a plane here and I'll just scale the plane down a bit and I'm just gonna hit the I key to inset this and then I'll just add some loop cuts here and I'm just gonna create kind of like a sci-fi event then I'll hit the I key just to inset that down there and then maybe I'll just add a bevel modifier just to smooth out the edges so I'll add a bevel modifier turn up the segments and then apply that and we'll shade it smooth so I'm gonna make a decal out of this so I'll hit the N key for the side panel you can go to the add-on you can click here on tools and you can click on decal creator now on the type here, we want to click on normal map instead, and then we'll click on material normal. And then you can also choose the resolution, but I'm just going to go with a 1K. And then we can just choose a path to save our decal. And I'll just add it in a folder here. So I'm going to add my custom decal here. I'll click on accept, and then I can click on create normal. And you can see the add-on is going to create a decal for you. So that is super cool. So now if I go back over here to my original file, I'm going to go to the add-on settings. Let's make sure the normal is turned on and then we'll start projecting and then I will import my decal. So here's the custom decal that I just created myself. So I'll click on import decal and then I can go to top view and I can like scale this up here. So you can see now it kind of looks like a sci-fi vent or some grading or something. So I can just hit the space bar to place that there. And then as well as creating your normal decals, you can also create regular decals. So here is just a decal that I've created and just make sure that the modifiers are applied and make sure that it's all one object. So I'll open up the tools here on the add-on settings. We'll go to decal creator. And instead of choosing normal here, I'll just choose decal. And then I just want to choose the 1K. And then I can just save it to my computer. So it's going to save it there in that folder. And then I can click on create decal. And then back here in my original file, I'll just select this object here. And we'll just uncheck the normal because I'm not going to be adding a normal decal. And we'll start projecting. So here's the decal that I just created. So I'll just import this decal. And then I can just place this decal on the model. So that is Decal Master. I can highly recommend this Blender add-on for anyone wanting to add lots of decals to their models. And if you'd like to purchase the add-on, you can use my affiliate link in the description. And if you use my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission. So that's a great way to help support this channel. But I only recommend content to my audience, which I really stand behind. But I can highly recommend this add-on. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And thank you for watching.